Hi everyone, welcome to this new video where we will see how to run your first job in MSc Nastran. Being the first video about MSc Nastran, we will keep it simple. We will perform a static analysis and solve a simple example of 3D beam under some load as shown over here. Before we start with actual Nastran, I think it is very important to understand what exactly Nastran is. Nastran is now available for many decades, so it is a powerful, tried and tested industrial grade structural analysis FPS solver. It can do many things. It can do linear analysis, non-linear analysis, dynamic analysis, fatigue analysis, you name it. Hence, it is very versatile, but it is just a solver. So as you have guessed it, it will need some other pre and post processor. I have listed down here two most common pre and post processor used with MSC Nastran. One is MSC Apex and other one is Patran. Nastran is used widely in industries such as aerospace, automotive, many consumer products and defense. If you want to know further details about MSC Nastran, this is the website. I will put this website in the description box below and it does have a student version available. So if you are a student, you can get it for free. To summarize, Nastran is known for multidisciplinary structural analysis. You can also perform multi-physics analysis such as structural, thermal, diffusion and you can couple them with each other. It is also known for structural assembly modeling along with integrated optimization. Hence, you can perform topology optimization as well in Nastran. And finally, high performance computing. And to give a full picture, I also want to mention some limitations of Nastran. One obvious limitation is it does not have inbuilt pre and post processor. We always have to depend on some external pre and post processor we also should have some knowledge of nastran keywords if you are performing any simple analysis you don't have to know nastran keywords but if you are doing some kind of advanced simulation then it is highly important to understand how nastran keywords work just one slide showing different capabilities of MSc Nastran. In this video, we will not go into details of this. Our focus is going to be linear static analysis. But you can see so many more things are there. We will see them in later videos. Now, time for our example. As always, we will solve same example, which we did in past videos. We have a monkey sleeping on cantilever beam. We will represent that beam as shown over here. It has a square cross section with 0.1 meter for each side. Length of beam is one meter. It is fixed at one end. And we are assuming monkeys apply uniform pressure on this top surface. Overall workflow to solve this example is shown over here. First we have to create this geometry then mesh it, create the material. We will use this simple material. So just isotropic linear elastic material with Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio as shown over here. Then apply boundary conditions. We are assuming weight of monkey is 30 kg which results into pressure of 3000 pascal on this top surface. Then we will define some analysis parameters basically saying we will do linear static analysis and all the things up to this step we have to perform in some external preprocessor. This can be done very easily in Apex or Patran. Once we do all these steps we will write an input file for Nastran. Then we will open that input file in text editor and understand how it is structured. Then run that input file using MSC Nastran. We will understand all the output files which gets created and then we can visualize those output files again either in Apex or Patran. I already created one video showing how to solve this example in MSC Apex. Hence, we will not go into details of first few steps. You can see this video. I will give link of this video as well in the description box. But let me open Apex and we will start with this step directly. We will write the input file of Nastran using Apex. This is the model we created in Apex. Now technically we don't have to write input file and then submit via external Nastran. We can directly go over here in study, do right click on this first job and say run simulation. That's what we did in earlier video because Apex is already linked with external Nastran. Now we will do something different. So instead of running simulation, we will just export the Nastran input file. For that, click on export. I created this one folder on desktop. So we will export that file at this location. For that, let's go to that folder. Name of the file is first job. And let's say save. Here we can keep everything as default and say export. Now if we go back to that folder, we will see one PDF file, which is Nastran input file. Let's open this in text editor. This is how it looks. Let's quickly go through what different sections are in general. Nastran input file is divided into five sections and all of those are shown over here. First two are optional sections. That's the Nastran statement and file management section. In our input file, I don't think we will have these. Nastran statement allows you to modify certain system defaults and generally we don't need to change this. And file management section allocate our database like where they go, how large they are allowed to grow, 
etc but this also usually we don't have to include anything next is optional delimiter id followed by all the required sections post required section is executive control section here we define what solution type we are trying to run whether it is linear static dynamics normal modes non-linear etc followed by entry c end which is nothing but transition into case control section in case control we define load boundary conditions data requests things like that and then we have begin bulk delimiter where we have actual model so node coordinates element connectivity loads and boundary conditions everything will go over here we define loads and boundary condition over here but we have to activate them in case control section file ends with end data now let's open our file and see if we have all these sections or not. In Nastran input file, comment starts with dollar sign. Hence, all the initial lines, these are just comments. When you create input file using Apex, you usually get all these comments where you will have unit mentioned. There will not be any units in the entries below. Hence, you have to make sure unit is correct or not over here. The first actual line, which is not comment, it's SOL 101, which is executive control section over here. SOL 101 means we are going to perform linear static analysis and it is followed by delimiter C end. Hence, executive control section, we have only one line, which is SOL 101. Delimiter begin bulk, we can see over here. Therefore, everything from line 21 to line 33 is our keys control section. SPC and load are boundary conditions. These are all the output requests and this is our load case. So we have just single load case. If we go further down, this line just defines we will have HDFI result file. This is by default. You can change it to some other formats as well. This is the file which you will use to visualize and post process in Apex or Patran. Usually the default one works fine. We don't have to worry about this. And then we have our elements. C hexa is the type of element. If I go down, we will have all the elements followed by all the nodes. Grid is node. Let's go further down. Then we will see material definition followed by element property. Then the load we applied and displacement boundary condition. Everything ends with end data. Now this feels little bit daunting. I agree it is not easy to understand if you are seeing it for first time. But the good news is in most cases you don't have to see this. Everything will work just fine with Apex or Patron. Still it's good to have idea what is going behind the scenes. And at any point, if you want to know what exactly this keyword means, we have something called Nastran Quick Reference Guide. Let me show you that. Whenever you install Nastran documentation, you get this icon on the desktop. You will be greeted by this screen. And here you have something called Quick Reference Guide. Let's go in this. This has explanation about all the keywords used in Nastran. Let me just give you a couple of examples. Here we have keyword Pload4. We can just search about that keyword. And if you go here, you can see the syntax for that keyword. This keyword defines pressure load on surface and face of solid elements. Which solid elements are supported is given over here. We have C hexa element. So it is supported. Then this is the format for P load 4. First entry is always P load 4. Second entry is SID which is load set identification number. That means just a number to identify this load. So we have one over here. Next is EID which is element identification number. That means we are applying this load to element number 78. Next four entries are the load values. We are applying P1 as 3000 and next three are empty. Why these are empty is because by default value of P2, P3 and P4 is P1. So we don't have to explicitly define it. Then we have values G1 and G3 which are grid point connected to corner of the face. So those values are given over here. This plus signs means just entry is continuing on the next line. And in next line we have surf and nor. That corresponds to SORL and LDIR. If you go down over here, you can see here the string surf means surface load and norm is direction of that load. Similarly, if we see SPC1, SPC1 is set of single point constraint. First entry SPC1, second entry is again identification. We have that as one. Next is component number. That means degree of freedom number which we are constraining. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are fixing all the degrees of freedom followed by the nodes for which we are fixing those degrees of freedom. You can see over here G1, G2, G3. It will be just the list of all nodes to which we are applying this boundary condition. As I said earlier, defining boundary conditions and load only in this bulk data section is not enough. We have to call them in case control section. Hence, if we go up, to case control section, we can see load number one is called and SPC number one is called. 
these are the id for those entries hence we activated them over here similarly you can check for all different keywords in quick reference guide we will not go into details of this rather let's see what happens when we run this input file before running let's just see what output files we are expecting this is the input file we just saw when we run this input file using msc nastran usually we get these four output files out of these four files, .h5 is the file Apex will use to visualize and post process. .06 is the main MSC Nastran output file. This you can open in text editor. This will have all the warnings and errors. If you are having trouble running the job, this is the file you want to open and see. Then we have .f04 file, which is execution summary. This has timestamp for every Nastran step. And lastly, we have something called .log file, which is operating system type log and has all the executable paths as well. Let's open MSC Nastran. It will just ask you to locate the input file. You can see there is no GUI. We just have to go to that folder. This is the file we wrote a couple of minutes ago using Apex. Hence, choose that and click open. It will ask us if you want to define any optional keywords. We don't want any. Just click run and done. Some command window will pop up with a status, but this was a quick job. It was over within a second or so. Hence, nothing pops up when job is completed. No messages whatsoever. But now if you go into this folder, we will see those four output files we just discussed. This is the file we have to use Apex to open and other three files we can open in text editor. Let me open these. This is the log file. You can see all the things related to operating system. You can see all the executable paths. If you go down, you can see analysis time as well. Being a small job, it took hardly a second. Usually we don't need to open this file. The main file we want to check is .f06. This is the main Nastran output file. If you go down here, you can see how Nastran read the input file. All the input file entries will come over here. And if you go further down, you will see some results. For a small model, it makes sense. But for large models, definitely you have to use some post processor. If there are any errors or warning that will show up over here, this job ran smoothly. So if I search error, we will not see any. And lastly, it's .f04 file, which shows every Nastran step. So these are all the timestamps for those Nastran steps. Let's quickly open this hdf5 file as well using Apex. To do that, we have to right click on this first job again and go to attach Nastran results and browse to that file. I think it was in Apex DIR. Yes, this is that file. Click open and see attach. Results are attached. Hence, we can go to post process and results are available. If we see displacement, it is there. If you want to see stress, it is there and so on. I think it's a good point to stop. We understood how Nastran input file is structured, how it looks, how to find information in quick reference guide about each keyword in Nastran input file. And we briefly understood all the different Nastran output files as well. In future videos, we will go into more complex examples and try to explore some more advanced feature of Nastran. But that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next one.